Virtually eliminate arm pump and fatigue. Ride longer, faster, better. Understand how to set up your bike properly. I'm going to teach you everything about it. Enjoy. Kirkpatrick with Mark Sicker uh, Enduro in South Madison Motorsports. I'm actually here in my messy shop with my dirty bike, the 2020 Husky TE 300. Um, today we're going to talk about. I just answered some questions on some on Facebook about helping arm pump. That's something I struggled with for a long time. So this video is going to be setting the bike up to help decrease arm pump. Arm pump is when you got so much blood flowing in to your forearm and hand, we call it claw hand or arm pump, that it can't leave. All right, it pumps up and it's stuck there and it gets sore, it gets numb, and eventually it can lead to not being able to use it, your arms as much. And usually it comes from, it comes more, it usually comes more into the arm, the, the arm that's most affected, sorry, the arm that's most affected is usually the clutch hand since it's usually using the clutch so much. When I was in motocross, it was mostly this because I was using the throttle so much, all right? So Enduro, I experienced this arm a lot more from using my clutch so much. But when I was running the 125, that's when I was using this a lot more and I'd experienced both, all right? So that's what we're gonna talk about today how to fight arm pump, how to set the bike up so you can last longer on the races, you can have a more enjoyable ride. That's what it's all about. Whether you're racing, uh, competing for money, or you're just riding with friends, it's all about having fun on the bike. And the moment that your brain is thinking, I'm in pain, I'm in pain, I'm in pain, you're no longer having fun. Now you're just in for the long haul, pushing through. Um, sometimes in a race you got to push through but you know at the end of the day riding bikes is supposed to be fun it's a hobby it's a job for some people if you don't love what you're doing you're not going to be about it you're going to give 100 percent um so that's what we're going to talk about we're going to talk about bike setup and how to fight arm pump and fatigue in your arms and hands all right and that comes down to body positioning and setting up simple stuff like your clutch your brake your throttle, setting up your suspension, setting up your sag, get the best handling out of your bike. Um, suspension is a big thing too. A lot of people will get there, they'll watch, you know, all these other channels and they'll be like, put your brakes here, put your brakes here, put your clutch there, you know, bring it in, out, up and down. Um, but they don't talk about, that's not the only thing. Whenever you start impacting the face of a jump or you're preloading, if your suspension's not set to you, whether it's your spring rate, your sag, uh, your forks, all that stuff. You know, you're racing enduro with, you know, extreme enduro with motocross suspension that's hard, rock hard. You're gonna get arm pump immediately within, you know, a mile or two. You're gonna be smoked. Or if you try to, you know, but if you go and race enduro, take an enduro setup like this, hit the motocross track, you're gonna be slamming through and pushing through uh, the mid-range of your stroke the entire time, riding at the bottom of your stroke, slamming and soaking up every bump. You're gonna get arm pump. You're not gonna last but more than, you know, five, 10 laps on a practice day and you're gonna be done, you know? So people forget all about that. They're just like, this is the end all, they think this is the end all be all of setting a clutch. That's not, you know? That's not how it goes. Your bike has to be set up for you and set up for the riding conditions you're going to be going into, all right? You know, you take a trials bike out to a motocross track, you try to hit a triple with it, like, a, you know, a FX three, uh, 450 or 
sitting like Cooper Abbott over a, a big triple on a trials bike that he's doing on his 450 or 350 and see what happens and then try to do a whole motocross race on a trials bike see what happens that suspension is way too soft right so they forget about that so we got to set our bike up for us if the bike isn't steering if you can't be confident where the bike is steering having the fork height set correctly or having your sag set and having the geometry of the suspension set to where it's operating on a level plane while you're crushing whoops or whatever and it's bouncing back and forth and you're trying to mitigate it you're going to get arm pump you're going to get fatigued you're going to get tired all right so people forget all about this the whole bike from the tires on up to the seat that's bike setup and if you don't have all those factors in your favor you're going to get arm pumped you're going to get smoked you're not gonna have a fun time. So we're gonna talk about how to fix that today, all right? So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna, I'm gonna try to split this up because this, I could talk for, literally ask any of my buddies, I could talk for hours, five, 10, 15 hours straight and not even take a breath or a break on suspension. I just, I, this is what, is what I love to do. Um, in the car world, I build, I do a lot of suspension geometry, so I, I really nerd out on that. And I like, you know, manageable power. And my buddies will tell you the first thing I'm trying to do all the time is I'll go into the suspension without even touching the engine. It doesn't matter what bike I'm on. I won't even touch the engine until I do suspension stuff, all right? What we're talk about is tires, all right? We're talking about using, if you want to use, if you're, you want to have the tires set uh, for what you're doing. All right, so if you're running tubes or you're running mooses or whatever have you, um, or tubeless from Nitro Moose or anything, you can have those different things. Those all work good. I will tell you right now what I experienced with my Nitro Mooses. I'm running NM, uh, Nitro Moose Softy. Um, and the, the dead feeling everybody talks about, I haven't experienced, but I have experienced a dead feeling when I go hit railroad tracks. I have a long set of decommissioned railroad tracks a couple miles long. I want to try the moose out on that. I noticed with a tube, the faster I went, um, well, either way, the faster I went, the less brutal it was going to be. I started riding more on my mid-stroke. But I could ride slower, first gear, second gear, and the tubes at 5 PSI would soak those up a little bit more than the, than the moose would. But I will tell you that on the trail, like we did a long 30-mile trail yesterday, and Friday we did a lot of extreme enduro training. Um, that the two that these nitro moose i've never felt grip on in the corners or anything else like i have with these mooses uh just crashing and barreling through rocks and stuff i didn't have to worry about dinging my rim and and blowing a tube you know or blowing my tire out on sharp rocks so we had some sharp volcanic rocks and some super slick rocks um so that's one thing is you got to choose what you want there honestly that's across the board that's preference uh Tubeless, I don't use that because of the stuff I ride in. Sometimes a lot of sharp rocks, and I rip up my truck tires, so I know for sure I'm gonna rip up dirt bike tires, and I don't need a hole to deal with. Um, I have popped tubes and stuff on trails, even with ultra heavy duty tubes. Um, my trials bike has ultra heavy duty tubes, with the stuff I'm doing with that, as usual, I'm not flying down a trail 45 miles per hour and slamming into a sharp rock. Uh, so. But the nitro mooses, the softies is what I like. Um, I don't have to worry about breaking it in or anything like that. You can get the harder mooses or softer mooses. I would use the harder mooses on a tra on a motocross track um, to get that 10 to 13 PSI, but I like the six to eight PSI. To me, they feel a little bit more, I got about 12 hours on them right now and they feel a little bit more like four PSI, which I like a lot because my back tire will roll over um, and the uh, rocks and stuff and, and conform to the train I'm riding and I'm absolutely loving it. The traction is unreal, I love it. So we can eliminate that because we have the nitro, uh, the, uh, and that comes again with, if you're using tubeless nitro mousse or tubes, those are gonna require different suspension settings. The tubes soak up more uh, hits and it will work as its own type of suspension, whereas a, the foam tube doesn't soak up those as much. So you gotta be more refined into your uh, tuning. But honestly, to me, what I think is, is I can eliminate that factor from my suspension and just focus on my suspension. I'm not focusing on PSI here 
and then setting up my clickers, rebound, and compression up here, and uh, all that business. It's just the factor that's totally eliminated for me. I don't have to think about it. I'm just gonna go straight to my clickers and everything. I'm not gonna be changing your PSI and all that stuff because then you get some areas, some areas like you to have like 10 PSI, and then this, and I have all my suspension settings on the inside of my fender right here. So at uh, three PSI rear, I had um, 20 clicks up, and then again, uh, I had 15, 15 rear and 13 front, I had 19 and 20, so I have all those settings. So you see how like the different PSIs of the tires actually matter, all right? So that's one thing you gotta work with as well. You got compression and you got rebound. And you got compression rebound there, all right? That's something you have to do as well. So that's just talking about the tires, PSI, and all that stuff, all right? So and then I, and as far as tires go, I'm running an MX-52 front from Dunlop because I'm running in, I'm riding in hard terrain mostly, all right? So if you have hard terrain, you need a softer tire, okay? Rocks, you know, ruets, stuff like that. If you're running in hard packed terrain, a hard terrain tire is a softer tire, okay? And now soft terrain is a harder tire, all right? So I'm running in hard terrain, I'm running a Shinko uh, SX216, it's a gummy. All right, that's for hard terrain. When I ride the motocross track or I go out to a sandy track, I run a Shinko MX216, which is a harder tire for softer terrain, all right? And speaking about tires too, whenever you run the 120-118s or you run the 140-80-18s, you're gonna have to change your sag up a little bit, all right? Because your, ba your back end is gonna set down a little bit more, okay? So you're gonna have to up your sag a little bit couple of millimeters for my 120 100s for the husky um i run a 110 sag for most of my enduro stuff all right now when i put the mx216 on or the 140 80 18 i run a 107 millimeter sag with those and the sag is the rear the shock of your rider sag right so there's a million videos it's probably like 4.2 million videos on setting sag dirt bike channel rocky mountain atv slavens tokyo off-road i mean there's literally a trillion places where that talk about sag so I'll, I'll let you go seek that stuff out about setting your sag up too it's an easy thing to do it's something i do all the time and for me i haven't put it on yet but i set sag so much for the different types of track when i hit the motocross track and it's sandy i run 104 millimeters I hit the motocross track like what well, that's like Riverdale. When I hit like Washougal, I hit I, I kick it down to about 105 to 106 millimeters. When I'm hitting extreme enduro races, I have my sag from 107 to 110 millimeters. So sag is a big deal, and that's where your bike sits down in the rear, and that is gonna change your front geometry as well. Alright? So when I'm riding on a sandy track, I want to stay high. As high as I can in my stroke and keep a little bit more of that weight down on the front tire and so I can dive into corners and get out of that and I'm gonna ride on a lot more even playing field when I'm riding on a harder terrain track I'm already you're already setting on top of that uh, that media and you're going across so if you're up too high you got front ends gonna start destabilizing at higher speeds when you're coming down a straight so you need to kick your sag down a little bit to get your bike to level out on a playing field, all right? So the best thing to do to find what sag works for you is set all your clickers right in the middle, go hit the track. If it feels like your front is diving uh, into the corners or washing out, deflecting, washing out, set your sag up a little bit high and then ride again, all right? Go up like two, three millimeters so, and then keep doing that. I like to set mine three at a time if I'm trying to find my sag for that track. I'll set it baseline like 105 and then I'll come, if I know it's harder, you know, I'm gonna come down, I'll come down three. All right, and that feels a little bit, be that feels better, then I'll start messing with my clickers to find uh, my, uh, what my suspension setting is gonna be for that track for that day. Um, if I know it's soft, I'm gonna come up three from that. So 102 and I'm gonna set my clickers 
um, for that as well. So if it's softer, I like to have my suspension just a little bit harder. And if it's a harder compound, I like to have my suspension a little bit softer. Okay, so that's in the clickers. Now if you're going down in clickers, that's softer. You're going up in clickers, that's harder. But read your manual to know where hard and soft is, all right? So first thing you do, if you have a brand new bike, you don't know anything about it, go set the sag to the factory, ran, the factory manual setting, go hit the track, and then change it by three. Go up three millimeters, go down three millimeters. It's really easy to do. Most springs, you can get through the side and you hit the top ring. You can look that up, spin it out, spin it down. It helps if you get the bike up off the ground and get the suspension all the way out. And then you can usually turn that by hand or these WPs, you have to get a little tool to do that. Or you can go to Rocky Mountain MX uh, ATV and get the X-Trig preload adjuster for your shock. Have a shop install it or install it yourself. Um, and then you can just put an eight millimeter wrench or eight millimeter socket, just like this. Spin it up, spin it down, check your sag, get a sag gauge tool. It's one of the most important things I have in my uh, inventory and get that set. So one, rider sag, that's gonna be a big one. How your body position is and you fighting handling. If you're fighting your handling around the track, you're gonna get arm pump, all right? It doesn't matter, you can set this clutch in any angle you want. Your throttle at any play you want. Front brake at any play you want. Your fork heights, any play, any, any height you want. If your sag's off, the whole bike's off, all right? So the next thing goes into fork height. All right, when you're running these big fatty tires, you need to come down usually one level on your fork height and then set your sag a little higher to get the geometry to level the bike out as it's flying through whoops or sections. If it's dancing high like this, all right, your forks are probably too high and your sag is too low in the rear. You're gonna have to change that. It's four bolts here, put it on a bike stand, pop it up, you have four different adjustments here, all right. Um, and there you go, all right? So you you can change that, you can check it with a gauge and setting that, you have, something you have to work on. Like I said, when you first get your bike set, all the clickers to the middle, set your sag to your manual, set your forks in the middle, go hit the track, set your sag, and then start playing with your forks. Some people will say when, you know, oh, bring your forks, you know, all the way down and your clamps all the way up, you know, bring it down and that's going to uh you know that's where it's best it's that's that's the best that's the best well that comes down to your suspension settings where it's riding in the stroke your sag the rider's weight and the track itself whether it's soft or hard or the terrain where it's soft or hard there is no just like there everybody talks about happy medium you can find that stuff mine's kind of a happy medium right now but it's not refined all right, because I've been hitting a lot of different trails and tracks. I don't want to set my settings to every single one. I just want to ride something in the middle. And, but I do a lot more trial training. So my suspension is set up for my enduro cross track. And I just push through. All right, but it's not always great. Um, for some stuff, I might be slower on one trail and faster on another because of the softness and hardness of it. Yesterday was a hard terrain. I was fast on it. We did a soft terrain Friday. I was slower on it. All right. And that's a big thing. But let me just tell you what, then it gets to clickers, your rebound and compression. Those matter so much that if I am off four clicks on my compression and rebound, I'll make it about 2.5 miles down an aggressive enduro trail and I will be smoked. All right. If I hardened my suspension up yesterday, I would have made it two miles, stopped, had to take a break. I changed it just a couple of clicks. All right. And so now I'm running 19 and 20 on my rebound and compression. All right, so that has allowed me to go all day long without getting arm pump, all right? Doesn't matter where this is, all right? If this is set, you're good to go, all right? So that's something that uh, is a big deal. Something you wanna look at is your suspension settings. You might not, getting, might be, not be getting arm pump from, um, your brake levers being wrong or your stance being wrong it's probably your suspension beating the hell out of your wrists and your arms and your hands and then you trying to counter act that by giving it more handling giving it more work more movement not letting your suspension do the work and thou you're smoked and tired and your buddies are passing you up because they're getting they have their suspension set
So that's the difference, all right? You can go make it down a 2.5 mile trail, be smoked, or you can have your bike set up right 30 miles in and you still feel ready to go another 30 miles. That's a big deal, all right? So compression, if it's, if it's going up, these uh, WPs, for, for what works for me, is for the hard trail is 110 millimeters. I have this at the third setting down, all right? So I'm kind of lower. Um, and then I'm running a 19 and on my compression and 20 on my rebound. Um, but then if I get into a more technical trail, I'll go up to, I'll go down to 15 here. So right written there, 15 compression, 13 rebound. If I'm going on a, a way fast race, but I know it's pretty soft terrain, I'm gonna turn this for the TEs, they got the preload up here, I'm gonna turn it to three and go seven and 10, all right? And then I'm gonna set my sag on the harder terrain stuff that's faster at about 107, all right? Or so, all right? So that's, uh, like I said, that's, that's for like Enduro, but the motocross track, I'm about 104, okay? So that's a big deal. And I will tell you what, just in these all day long, what everybody says is a go-to is not always gonna be the right answer, all right? Now, another thing, bar risers. You can use bar risers. That will help you help with arm pump, but it will take you out of your power zone when you go to go over a log, okay? So I like to keep my nice and low, my, uh, my handlebars in line with my steering stem, cocked forward a little bit. I like mine nice and wide, like my trials bike. That's where I feel the most comfortable as I run the Pro Taper Husqvarna bend, um, factory bend. Um, I'm running the Evos because I fold up contours like it's going out of style. These Evos have been taking a massive beating, trust me. I haven't been to them yet and everybody would think that's pretty crazy because I've gone through like four sets of bars this year. So, um, yeah. So bar risers though, um, the higher this is, you know, the taller you are, it, you have to lean forward a little bit more, right? The, Cause lower, so people put bar risers on to bring it up. But honestly, if you're tall, you can, you know, keep your bar risers down a little bit and you'll still be in that nice attack position. The higher your bars up, the more standing straight up you are. And when you do that, you're trying to lift your bike up over a log and you're, you're doing this, okay? Try to do a push up, and if you're like right here trying to do a push up all day long, how how high are you gonna get up? You can't, all right. Your bike, your back's all pinched up, and when your back's pinched up, the blood is flowing to your back through your biceps and stopping, and you're gonna be cramping up, getting arm pumped there too. Okay. Um, but the I like to keep mine nice and low, factory height. I am five foot seven, so that helps. I'm a little shorty, yeah. So. Uh, but honestly, like I, if I could get them a little bit lower, I would. So like the Astro bars that are even lower, I think that's what I'm gonna try out. Or the Phoenix 70 millimeters, I'm gonna try those out too. Try to get them even lower for me because I want more power to be able to rip the bike up and stand it up for my splatters. That's what I wanna do. I wanna get more height out of it. And that's all suspension, you know, so. Uh, and body position, all right? So that's a big one too. Um, as far as when you're short, you know, cutting your seat down instead of um, going to lowering links, you know, or go to suspension works and get your bike professionally done for suspension and professionally lowered because putting lower links on drops your sag down low. This is still high and you don't, you're not stable going through a corner. You're just going to be washing out. All right. If it's high, you're washing out. Think of a truck you see North Carolina truck you see it like sagged out in the rear and you try to take a turn on a highway, what's gonna happen? It's gonna keep pushing, all right? So you don't want that, you have no grip in the front, all right? It doesn't matter what tire you're running in the front. Um, so if it's not your tire, it's probably your sag is jacked up, all right? So it's probably suspension and setup. Uh, another thing is, is now we get into bars, bar height, we get into riding position. So that's something I want to talk about before we even get into adjusting the clutches because we're going to get there. We're going to get there like everybody does.
Riding position is a big deal. All right. Riding position is a big deal. All right. So we want to be, we want to use the ball of our foot. All right. Ball of our foot to lock that in. All right. And use our legs to do most of our turning. Okay. So most of our turning is gonna be deal is gonna be dealing with our legs and our body, not so much our arms. So when we start moving that around, not having our elbows up nice and high in our attack position here, you know, or here, you know, if you're not keeping those nice and high, then you're gonna destabilize, right? Especially guys jumping like Ronnie Mac, they're jumping, but they're like this, right? And they're sitting the bike like this and almost backflipping their bike. Or if they're jumping and they're like up here, you know, sometimes you will, but you're gonna end it with. So keep your bike, being able to move your body back and forth using full range of the bike is a big deal. That's why I hate those humps that go on the back of your seat that lock you in right here. You're not riding the bike here all day, you know? Try hitting a jump and then coming right back down here. You're not gonna have any power. Also trying to get over logs, you know, right here, that's not gonna help you get over it. You're just gonna, no lift happened, all right? So if you come here, flip, nothing happened, all right? Just like doing your wheelies, you're not gonna wheelie from like right here unless you're on like a 450 with a super motor, motor super motard or whatever, all right? So when we go over a log, you know, we can press and back, you know, back here. We're moving more of our hips. Okay, and you see how much power I got there with the, even with the, uh, with the gear, all right? So let's see if we get any lift here. No, let's see if we get lift here. See how much, how much weight you can throw back to get your bike up? So that's another thing, body position. You're going into a turn, a motocross, you're getting up high, elbows up, kicking that leg out, hugging it, you know, on both sides, all right? When you're going over, you know, a log or something, you're back here to level the bike out, all right? So what I like to do to set up my clutch and everything is to get all the way back as far as I can, the balls of my feet, this is the farthest back my body's going to go with my short stubby legs, all right? So being back this far, I reach forward, all right? And you want to be in a straight line. So I can just grab my clutch right here. I can still get to it. That works for my pivot turns, all right? I can still touch my brake for my pivot turns, for my static wheelies to get over a log, um, anything like that. All right, I can still touch my stick shit or my shifter in this position. So setting your shifter up for your, to be able to reach it at the farthest point is a big deal. All right, and also when I'm up here, am I still in a straight line? Even up here, my arm is still straight. You see that? I'm not cocking it down here. Cocking your arm gives you arm pump. Working like this, gives you claw hand. Taking an impact because you have this wrong into your rip, the pad is gonna make your pinky numb, all right? So now I have a nice even impact area across my whole palm. I'm still in a straight line. I'm at, the, I'm at the farthest point I can get on my bike. My arm's still in a straight line. I'm all the way back here. I'm still in a straight line. I'm riding up here. I'm still in a straight line, all right? That's what you're trying to accomplish. If your wrist is bent, arm pump, claw finger, all right, claw hand, taking an impact like this, all right, constantly. Because if you're riding up here and you're hitting right here, you're hitting this nerve right here. We talk about this in shooting and stuff in the army. All right, this can go numb. This makes your pinky numb, right? There's a nerve right there, all right? Go ahead and hit that. You can feel it affect your pinky and already start going numb. If you don't have your this clutch and everything set up, and this is the reason why, all right, is because of the, like these are the reasons why 
And what happens if it's not set up correctly? People just say, I'll make it go in a straight line, but straight line where, to what, when, where, how, all right? So you wanna be able to be in a straight line at the farthest point of your bike, on this side, this side, in the middle standing, okay? And the same thing with the brake too, all right? Something you can do on the Husqvarna's and KTM's, you can go down if it's, you can set your preload on it, all right? To make it, you know, a little bit longer engagement and then it engages here, you get more control of it. You wanna to try to one finger it, okay? And all it takes is a little eight millimeter ratchet to go in there, loosen it up, all right? And then tighten. Also, take a little razor blade or something and make a mark where when you find your position, make a mark on your bars of, of where it is aligned to, to realign that. And when you take stuff loose or put new grips on or whatever you want to do, okay? Um, I think that covers a bunch of stuff on it, on the bike. Um, positions are a big deal. We're gonna talk more about positions later, but I'm seeing a lot of these questions and I see a lot of people answer with just a common, adjust your, adjust your clutch, adjust your brake. It's like, bro, that's cool and all, but there's a ton more factors of bike setup than just adjusting the height of a clutch or making it in line with your arms. That's cool, but why? What am I doing this for? Why is it that like, I change this and I, I'm still getting 2.5 miles down a trail. I'm still smoked, all right? Harder pack trails and everything, soften your suspension up, all right? If you're doing trials, soften your suspension up way soft. If you're doing hard motocross track or doing a motocross track and send off some big jumps, stiffen that up so you're riding in the more of the center of your stroke. You can take a zip tie and put it at the bottom of your dust collector here dust seal and you can see where you're riding in that stroke all right if it's all the way down at the very bottom stiffen your suspension up all right if you're take have buddies take videos of the rear end of your bike all right in slow motion and watch how if you're bottoming out constantly stiffen that rear shock up or set the sag up a little higher all right these are all very very important factors of how you can mitigate arm pump you can buy all the tools you want to stretch this out you can do all the, all the cardio and everything, but it doesn't matter. If your bike's not set up for you, it doesn't matter who you are, you're gonna get fatigued, all right? We're just setting this up to battle fatigue so we can last longer, all right? If you guys have any more questions, any more concerns, um, just give me a holler on um, YouTube or right there in the comments and I'll try to answer more questions. I'll do even more videos, all right? So I'm just trying to share my knowledge with you guys and what I've learned and what works. And I do a lot of bike setups and, and I've probably tried everything out there for battling arm pump and this is what works for me. So thanks a lot, have a good day. Like, share, subscribe, ask questions, hit me up, let me know. I love answering questions. And if I didn't, then I wouldn't even make these videos. I'll just keep writing and never tell anybody, all right? But I want to make you better, you know, we all have fun. This is what it's about, having fun on a bike. If you're not having fun on a bike, you're doing something wrong, right? So have a great day, guys, and uh, Merry Christmas.